Welcome, welcome, one and all, or exactly one, perhaps. Uh, this is the Crystal Tomb. I am Casey Stranger. Uh, these are three of my players. We shall hopefully be joined by Dose More players shortly. Um, as always, the Crystal Tomb is brought to you by XSplit Broadcaster, which I am now circling with my mouse uh, to highlight just how much we love XSplit. And I would, I, I will, I will take quarters XSplit. All this free advertising. Um, also by Tractor Blend. Thank you, Tractor Blend, for once telling me that you'd give me 50 cents every time I shouted out your name, and we'll see if I ever collect on that. Um, so, last time, the uh, party took a brief trip underground, where they exchanged news with two deep gnomes from the underground city of Skrital. Um, there they learned that in the absence of the goblinoids that had formerly occupied the depths, um, aberrations, uh, including mind flayers, had grown more active. Uh, before parting, uh, Krisa, who was the uh, one who did most of the talking, uh, gave Moira Steel Tree a bracelet, telling her it would offer her safe entry to Skrital. Um, after attending to a variety of errands, uh, sending zombies on trips through sewers, uh, the party met at the foot of the castle stair, where they were met by at the Greensword insert mandatory pawn. Uh, she brought them into the castle, where they met with King Shalot Steeltree, um, Counselor Emil Stormtreader, Royal Advisor Lucas Swallowtail, Corin Melnor of the Silver Wand Wizard's Guild, High Priestess of Venice, Mistia Cantania, the King's Sons, Brennan and Tad, and the Royal Bard, Leo Don Gazer. Um, after having chairs and ale brought in, King Steeltree had Leo present an errand to the party to travel to Westeros, to assassinate Rieta Umvaldir, a hobgoblin wizard commanding the demon army, uh, now apparently holed up in the uh, perhaps former mayor's house, um, and to secure, potentially to destroy, the ruby being used to facilitate uh, transport of the demons. <laughs> um, in support of a dragonborn attack to retake Siren. Um, What ruby? What? What ruby indeed. Um, so we return to the scene as a covered wagon pulls up to a back door of the castle and several undead are offloaded. Uh, Clean practically prances in front of them as she ushers them into her room. Uh, Brennan frowns at her and says simply, just to see that they don't make it outside your room. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the party makes their way into a comfortable dining hall. Uh, this is not the palace's banquet hall, but rather a small room used for more intimate gatherings. Um, a long table runs down one side of the room, uh, laid, laden with roasted chicken and corn, fruit and cakes, several bottles of wine. Uh, smaller tables and chairs dot the rest of the room. And at the far end, there is even a fireplace and a pair of large sofas. Uh, the company in the room is the same as a few hours prior, with the notable addition of Moira. Um, as Colleen enters the room, King Steeltree addresses you and says, uh, Reports indicate that the invading army can't arrive earlier than tomorrow evening, more likely the day after. I thought it best to enjoy one night before sending you on your way. Uh, please make yourselves comfortable, and here you sort of smirks in Aaronin's general direction and says, but not too comfortable. Uh, so with this... Thanks for... Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, got... No. Um, but so with this, you have some free time uh, to eat, to converse, um, to explore the castle. Potentially. Uh, so... You told me what we're shooting to one area. Uh, well... There, there was like a, a right wing that you were advised not to go down. You want to check the Um, right. So, uh, anyways, uh, does anyone have any particular MO for the evening? Somebody you want to talk to? Um, if not, it's totally fine. Uh, just, you know, normal conversational stuffs. I'd like to explore the castle. Um, okay. So, 
are you trying to just like <clears throat> first of all are you taking any food at all like are you waiting a little bit or are you just leaving right away or are you like not even going uh, I mean, I'll, t I'll take some food. I thought we already ate, didn't we? Well, no, you. you that have was some like drinks. Lunch. Yeah. Well, I'll take some food to my room, I guess, just to have it there. Maybe take eat a little bit of bread real quick, and then go exploring shenanigans. Okay. Um. Sure. So, are you trying to? Like, okay. How shall I put this? Like, you're obviously only going to sneak so much out of the room, but are you trying to hide yourself at all, or are you just sort of wandering? I'm, uh... I'm going to try to be stealthy about it. Okay. I'm not going to put up the hood. That looks too conspicuous. Okay. Uh, go ahead I'll and keep just... that down. All right, that sounds fine. Uh, go ahead and roll me a stealth check, just for general how much of a commotion you make okay oh man that's a terrible world. uh yeah so you know uh you slip out of the room well actually wait a minute let me see yeah okay uh you slip out of the room after not too much time has passed um you know maybe Maybe somebody takes note that you're gone, but nobody stops you. Um, so, yeah, so you exit this room. Uh, this area is sort of... So, all right, let me, let me draw this a little bit. Um, so we've got a situation where the castle is sort of laid out very roughly uh, like this. So there's like a left wing, a right wing, a back area where the uh, the throne room is. You can sort of, and like a main banquet hall and stuff like that. Uh, you can cross between these areas like through the outside. There's like a garden here. Um, and I'd you- I'd like to go to the right hall. Yeah, so you're gonna be somewhere like uh, about here. Um, so, in order to get to this area that you were advised not to go to, you'd either have to slip outside and find some entrance that you don't know about, um, or you'd have to cross through this central area. I'll try going outside. I'll go through the, I guess there's also a garden on the right side as well. Um, so you, you exit the little area that you're in and walk down the hall a bit. Um, on that side, you actually see sort of a, a stone terrace um, where there are there are a few guards just sort of uh, standing watch over the area, as well as a um, what not an outpost, but like there's a freestanding um, what looks like a small house that is some sort of tower used for storage or, you know, a watch or something like that. So there are guards on the terrace. How close is that little shed to the castle? Like castle walls? Right, uh, so you're currently somewhere around here. Uh, the little shed thing is kind of in the middle. Um, as you look out, you do see um... Let me see here. Actually, just a single door to the right wing, which is about here, and has uh, two of the guards are flanking it. Uh, one of and a third one is sort of like outside this little storage area. Um, so, like leaving outside, you'd be walking in front of all three of them. Okay, we're gonna try going through the central hall then. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you exit back into the central hallway. Um, this is, uh, you get to an area that's just sort of like a large receiving room. You walked through it with that the, the previous day. Uh, you see what you'd sort of overlooked um, earlier when you went through. Uh, but there's a hallway that runs down to another, uh, actually fairly ornate door that has, again, a guard posted on either side of it. 
Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Fallon, are you here? Yeah. Uh, so Fallon, welcome. Um, just to give you some context, you're all at dinner with like mostly the people who you met earlier in the day. Um, Kane decided to grab some food and then go on a solo adventure. So that's what's going on right now. Um, also, just FYI, if you check the uh, the character sheets, I made you a bunch of sheets for various beasts that you could potentially summon with conjure animals. So, um, anyways, holy moly! Yeah, it took me longer than I expected. Uh, all right, so back to you, Kane. Okay, so... Um, I, I guess I should mention the only thing that you'd see from the outside are, like, some windows fairly high up, so if you wanted to try to find ingress not right next to guards, that would be the main option. Oh, yeah, them windows, too. I mean, they're sort of high up. You'd have to, like, scale a wall without being seen, but... Mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess... So... But those windows are out of sight, a uh, direct line of sight of the guards, right? Like you had to move from their spot. I mean, you'll ha it's fairly open, that like terrace area. So you'll have to walk over open ground um, one way or another where they theoretically could see you fairly easily. Yeah, but once I get to where the window is, you don't see me anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. Once you get through it, you're good. You, you don't know it's on the other side of the window, but you ought to be good. Well, okay, so like, okay, I'm like, so I'm just saying, if I as I was going up the window, unless the guard like walks away from where they are, they wouldn't see me going up the window, right? Well, okay, so what I'm saying is, there are guards. Uh, let me get a different color. There's one here, one here, one here, and then on the inside, they're sort of flanking this only door to the right wing um so and, and it's all like open ground around it so like theoretically you could go in like here through a window or like over here but you're gonna have to walk over open ground that they could theoretically see okay so they, they could see me climbing up the window then theoretically yes Okay, because I don't, I don't think you see me going, walking around outside, it doesn't matter. I forget about potential getting caught in the act of climbing. I don't know. You're eh, told not risky. to go to this area. Too risky. I can't do any possible deniability if I get caught later. <laughs> I'll just go back to my room. Okay. Um, so you, you wander around a bit. Finally... You know, make some poison. Decide, decide it's not, uh, perhaps not in the cards um, this time, and sort of start uh, sulking back towards the room. Um, now, as you leave, uh, sort of heading this direction, um, out to walk through the garden back towards uh, you guys' rooms, you hear mm -hmm. a. You walk by on your right side, there's um, a bit of a of an apple uh, orchard there. You hear uh, a rustle of movement from inside the orchard, and um, instinctively you turn to figure out what you hadn't noticed before. Um, give me a, uh, what I want to call this, give me a dexterity saving throw. Who's attacking you? I will kill them. No one's attacking you. It's it's not for that. I'll kill it anyway. Probably. Okay, yeah. You you spin around and instinctively you reach up and actually catch an apple that was tossed towards you. And as you look into the trees, you um, as the sun is sort of setting. Uh, over the rock, um, you see a dark figure and you hear a smooth, almost poisonous voice. Why don't you step into the grove, Cain Fish Farmer? No one's looking now, but I'd hate for a private conversation to be overheard. 
This is sketchy as fuck. I'm going to do it, though. All right. Uh, you step in, and you see a uh, dark-looking elf um, dressed in sort of a midnight blue robe. Um, actually, give me a collect history check. Intelligence, Kane's best skill. You said history? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I give you nothing. It's a dark looking elf. Um, Hell yeah. And he says to you, uh, well, actually, let me think what does he say to you? He says, good man. My name is Varys, and he holds out a hand to you. You're a terrible AD carry. <laughs> it's spelled with an I, but yes. <laughs> uh, I look at the hand and look at him. Who are you? He shrugs and drops the hand. And <clears throat> he says, just someone who has an interest in your well-being and how you spend your time. I um, wanted to say, first of all, thanks for showing us the way to the surface. Who knows how long it might have taken if you hadn't gotten the Quagoths all riled up and pointed us in the right direction. That being said, I don't think we need to be enemies. I have a bit of a request for you, but you'll find Do I that... see any tentacles, Casey? Huh? Do I see any tentacles on this person? Pain's looking for tentacles. Give me perception. He's from below the surface. I don't trust him. He's got tentacles. I, I forgot how, alphabet. Where, oh, there it is. Okay. Alphabet is hard. Okay. You get a pretty good look at him. Uh, you even sort of examine the robe that he's wearing for like suspicious looking like lumps. You don't think there's anywhere to hide a tentacle there. Um, he really Who are to be you an elf. exactly? He says, Oh, let's just say I've got something of a relationship with your employer. Oh, okay. Insight check. That being said, as I said, I had a request, and you'll find that. Nothing I'm asking for should be disagreeable to you. But does he actually work for Tearsay, Casey? Hmm? I want to see if he's lying about working for Tearsay. Um, give me insight. How's that? That's what I want. Alphabet again. Wait, why am I having trouble with Alphabet today? There it is. <laughs> No. Uh, that seems to be the implication of what he said, but he wasn't very specific. Which employer? He looks at you and says... Hey, no, I'm not the boss. And says, you're with some thieves guild, right? He's, okay. I say, I'm like... What are you doing? What are you doing here in the, at the king's place? He shrugged. in like these camps. In these camps. Um. He actually. Let me think about this. Yeah. Okay. Um. He responds. Uh. You know. On the surface, you're having a nothing conversation, but he does respond in thieves can't, and says, "This is where I happened to track you down. I needed to." exchange words with you or while you were away from the others. Hmm. Go ahead. Give me your words. Okay. He says, I'll get right to it. Remember the man you passed on your way into the King's Hall? The same one you met the other day when you took your friend's skeleton out of the closet. What? Oh, oh, the guy who was, like, when it was uh, me and Max was in Killeen there. Yeah, that guy. Remember, 
Remember who I'm talking yeah. about? Man by the name of Gunnar yeah, Moon Petal. Yeah, yeah, I remember. What about him? Kill him. Why? You! He leans back. I don't think you need to know that. I think I'll... I don't think I know you. I don't think I trust you. You talk about being from below the surface, yet you work with my potential employers. Right, right. I always have more to go on. I assumed it might go this direction. He sighs and sort of puts his fingers on his forehead. There's a few things you should know. First of all, several of my companions are expecting me to return from this meeting very much alive. If they don't, they'll start taking act, or if I don't, they'll start taking actions that I doubt you'll approve much of. Ditto if you tell anyone about this meeting. Second of all, those same unpleasant actions are likely to fall if you don't undertake this little errand. Do I make myself clear? So you're saying I have no choice in it? I'm saying that disagreeing with me would be unwise and agreeing with me is not to your disadvantage. I'll give you this much, if it will help. Killing this man will aid in the defense of this city. All right, where is he? <laughs> he smiles and says, as far as I know, safely back at his home. I'll make sure you get the details that you need, but one important thing to know, the man has more than one trick about him. The most important thing to know concerns a ring that he wears on his right hand. It holds an enchantment that can remove him from any dangerous situation. So, best make your first strike a sure one, or else cut off his right hand. Secondly... How tough would you say he is? Wait, what'd you say? How tough would you say he is? How? I'd say like 1 to 10, about how, or 1 to 100. How about how tough is he? He looks at you and says, <laughs> he looks you over. In a straight fight, you'd take him easily. He just has tricks about him. Okay, just tricks. Like, what tricks I can deal with? He nods. He says, I do and expect I that this might take a few days. He is very well resourced. Don't worry, though. I'll be sure your friends get all the help that they need on their own errand. After all, and he smiles a bit. We're on the same side here. That being said, it'll be and necessary. Order... Go ahead, sorry. Okay, if I order a fact check this machine and what and your claim. Are you sure it would be work out in your favor? He tips his head to the side a bit and says Well, I'm hopeful that you can manage this sometime tomorrow, given the timing of when things are going to go down. That being said, if you were to look into my claim, you should find that he's no saint. Oh, well, I don't think we even could claim sainthood. I'm saying if I check to see who you really, if you are who you say you are. Good luck verifying that. And he gives you a weak grin. Good luck there, what? He says, good luck ver finding out anything about that. Oh. All right. Well, I guess either way, you'll have, you'll know where to die in a few days. He nods. It'll be necessary to sell certain parties on the notion that you've left for Westeros. To that end, he holds out a ring towards you. If you don't mind, make sure that you wear this tomorrow. All right. I, what's the ring look like? Uh, it's a simple, uh, it looks like a stone ring, actually. Uh, it even has a few, uh, like, look, what looks like a small crack running across the length of it, um, and small circles with very fine work. Uh, running around the length. Okay. Tomorrow, you say? Tomorrow. And if you need 
any more assurance. Um, and let me think what this would actually be. If you need, if you need any more assurance that I am indeed something of what I claim to be, he holds out a paper towards you. These are the location. These are all of your guild locations in the city. Are those all the guild locations in the city? Uh, you glance over it. Give me intelligence. Oh man! With that advantage. Was... Okay, I'll take it. Minus one. Natural 20 and natural one. Yep, that's pretty much every single one of them. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, you're either a friend or a great enemy, so I'll do what you say. He smiles a bit and says, Aw, why can't I be both? And with that, he... Uh, actually, give me perception. I, can I kill him anyway? Did, did he give you a name? I forget. No, so, t yeah, very. Never mind. Yeah. I really am eight until this time. You said perception, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's twenty-four. Okay. Uh, yeah, you watch as he sort of slips behind a tree and just moves extremely gracefully and efficiently, uh, sort of hopping to the back of the castle and flipping himself over the wall. Um, it's the sort of movement that uh, a less trained eye might lose sight of him entirely, honestly, uh, but you track him all the way uh, down over the back wall of the garden. He's a crafty bastard. All right, I continue my way to the uh, room. Okay. And I already used my uh, stone for today, right? Your what for today? My stone, sitting stone. Um, I already used that today. I can't remember. I know you used one recently. I'm trying to remember what that was for. Because I don't remember whether it was last night or this morning. Uh, I think the last time I used it was about um, not getting Cat's sister. Not getting what? Not being able to secure Cat's sister. Oh, right. Yeah, so that would have been last night. And telling so you where can where use it again. Going. All right. I want to say to uh, Tuli, mm -hmm. these Cat's there. Well, okay, first part, not these Cat. But then it's second part in these cans. So the first part, repeat after me verbatim. And then in these cans. Uh, do you have any dark friends in the city? Or, uh, Tirsa? Okay. That's, yeah, that's it for that. Um... Let me think about this. Uh, so yeah, so you go back to your room, you send this message, and you just sort of uh, settled in for the evening. Um, I did mention that with, that she answered that was for Tirsa. Like I said, tell Tirsa, ask Tirsa this, and then I'll, yeah. Okay. I also forgot to tell her who to put the message to. Yeah, 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 no, of course. Um, it, it actually, Time passes until pretty darn late, actually. Um, like about when you're about ready to give up and just go to sleep. Uh, but then you do finally get a message back um, that is also in Thieves' Cant. Um, and it just says, let me think. And it simply says, um, do as you were told. Okay. Cool. 
Then I guess I'll go to sleep and then in the morning put the ring on. All right. Um, okay, so now we head back Wait, to... Wait, actually, are other people awake? Sorry. Uh, I had sort of fast-forwarded in time. Um, so... Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, let's sleep good. Okay. Um, okay. So now we're going to rewind, though, uh, back to dinner. Um, so the rest of you are there, um, along with the folks that I mentioned before. Um, does anyone have anyone in particular that you're looking to talk to uh, over dinner? Uh, I'll probably talk to Colleen, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Just be like in between mouthfuls. I'm like, so Colleen, I was talking to the clouds yesterday. Or oh, fairly oh, recently. I don't uh, remember. Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, what was it? <clears throat> what was the storm giant's name? Icarus. Yeah. Uh, Icarus uh, sent me a storm or a message in a storm. It's kind of How weird. does that work exactly? <laughs> Do what? How does that work exactly? <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's not really a thing that I would know, unfortunately. Uh, as far as I could tell, she wasn't literally here, so I'm not really sure. Uh, but she did say that I should talk to you about this thing, and I'll I'll pull the uh, necklace that I got out <clears throat> from the uh, the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it pulls out the pale pink gem. I just give it a wide-eyed, curious stare. Yeah, I'm gonna take that as a you are interested or know something. Um, I I know many things. <laughs> Bragger. Um, okay. How, how did you get that away from Kane? I asked him for it very politely. Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever thought of that. <laughs> Chris, <is> spoiled again. <laughs> I really wanted him to just go insight check. <laughs> no, Kaleen doesn't make insight checks. <laughs> That's fair. But, uh, Not yeah. Kane. Like dog with uh, unless it's against Kane. Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Without good reason. <laughs> So, I uh, kind of had assumed that this was just, like, you know, a trinket from uh, the Cliffbreaker. But apparently that's not exactly what it is. Well, have you awakened it yet? I give you just, like, a deer in the headlights look of, like, wait, what do you mean? Well, you've heard me speak with Lassado before, haven't you? What's a Lassadal? Uh I pull out my pale yellow gem. Uh, both of you give me perception as Colleen does that. Mm -hmm. How this do I not have my character sheet of one? Okay. Colleen, as you bring out Lacidel and uh, bring it close to the other gem. Uh, you swear that you see them both glow very faintly. Do you see that? The uh, the glowing rock? Uh, you didn't see it, Max. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I was, I was sorry, I was drinking. They're reacting to each other. I look at the rock closer and then, like, move it in and then back away a little bit and do, does it do anything like does uh, it glow give brighter me perception one more time with advantage because you're specifically looking for it okay yeah you do notice this time you sort of pull it away and then when you bring it back to about the distance that it was at before you do notice a very faint glow. You would never have noticed it if you weren't specifically looking for it. Huh. Yeah. Yours is supposed to be the Sister Stone, but I can't recall her name. Uh, I I'll grant that you would remember this, actually, because you were told. I'm sure I have it written down. I'm just not looking at my character sheet. 
<laughs> That's interesting. Oh, um, don't. so is this uh, one of the things that we were looking for? Um, and I'm kind of at this at this point. Can I take a look around to see if anybody is noticing us? Yeah, well, sure. We kind of. Uh, give I mean, me... we kind of stand out. But... Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna call this insight, actually. No, oh, good. Well, I'm yeah. inclined to inform you that I believe it is, but I'm cautious about getting too excited. Uh, Maxis, you scan around the room. Everyone's engaged in separate conversations, as far as you can tell. Sick. Well, all right. Uh, I guess you said yours awakened. I think uh, Icaros said that she wasn't going to wake up for, like, another day? Was that, like, a day ago? Or was that two days ago? Uh, no. It was last night, and she okay. said a few days. Okay. Well, it sounds like she's going to stay asleep for a little bit longer. But uh, how did you go about waking up your rock? Um, well, that is rather curious. We were on the uh, topic of creation magic. And we... Um, you, were, you were talking about necromancy, wasn't you? No, not... Mm -hmm. It's a magic not known in this world. Um, but it's something my family spends a lot of time with, studying. And it's... Uh, it's rather hard to... Discuss openly, I suppose. <laughs> um, but I he... mean, to be fair, I probably will not understand it, so that is okay. I can't say exactly how uh, the stone awoke, but he came to me. And he's been a very faithful companion. He's always offered me guidance and more. <laughs> he's the reason I can... Um, control my experiments the way I can. Hmm. Well, that's... I mean, I was just looking for a token more than anything, but... At this I'm... moment, the two of you uh, notice a, a third party um, approaching your conversation. Uh, this is the uh, half-elf high priestess of Venice, uh, Nistia Cantaniel. Uh, she walks close and notices the two of you sort of uh, uh, fall silent a little bit um, as she walks up. And she says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not inter interrupting something, am I? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. What, what can we do for you? <laughs> uh, she, Call her a nosy bitch. She looks back and forth between you a little the two of you a little bit sort of gives a knowing nod. Um, and I just stuff my stone in, in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> and says, um, nothing much. I spoke with Anya this morning. She told me some interesting things. Um, and she gives a small smile. Um, and, and then she goes on. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to ask... Um, did you ever succeed in recovering Cyphera, the the looking glass? And everything um, that had passed, I was wondering whatever came of that. That's probably above my pay grade. I don't remember what that is. Um, who is it, who's asking that? I don't think we did. Nistia, the high priestess, actually. Oh yeah, got we, it we totally your... did. We right. totally did. It was your last visit to Tavrith. Aaron has it. Oh, that would be why I have no recollection of it. I mean, he might, we might just be lying. You don't know. I mean, I'm not. I, my character's totally forgotten about that by now. I, I honestly, we've gone through so many rituals and trinkets. <laughs> I don't there are recall. a lot of items. I'll admit <laughs> that. I will admit this. <clears throat> uh, I. Refuse to answer that question. <laughs> okay. She looks at you. I just um, remain silent. A little concerned and says, 
I would think this would be something you know, but perhaps you have your reasons. Um, she shrugs and says, For what it's worth, I'm pretty sure you mean well. And she uh, smiles at you, Colleen, and says, After all, I imagine that lump in your cloak would have flown away by now if you had betrayed its purpose. She thinks for a moment, That sounded weird, but I think you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> she clearly is gesturing towards where uh, Fabrizio is hiding under the cloak. <laughs> Is that a lump in your cloak? <laughs> <laughs> Clean the well, he's really there. happy to see him. <laughs> Any, anyway, she sort of uh, puts up a hand and says, No worries, no worries, I'll move along. Do let me know if there's anything I can do to assist, though. Um, and she starts to walk away. And finishes but... walking away. I'm gonna eye clean for a second and be like, I always forget about your winged snake. Tell you, bring it out again. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, he's very well behaved. Yeah, he's kind of just chills. Wait, what is he? I legit forgot he existed. <laughs> just say, and I will spend some time feeding Fabrizio. What does Fabrizio eat? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, so Fabrizio is a quaddle. He's some sort of like snake bird thing. What would you, you know, you know what? Give me animal handling. We don't, we only roll animal handling every so often. Oh shit. All right. Um, I'm very good at this. You, you walk over to the table um, and you grab a- Pie. No, just kidding. <laughs> um. You know what? Sure. You... Uh, what would it be? You, you grab... You, you wouldn't expect this, but you get a good feeling about it. You grab a slice of, of all things, rhubarb pie and bring it back. Oh, good. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Fabrizio actually just starts gobbling it up as you sort of sneak it under the table. You're shitting me. That was a joke. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, were, were you guys looking to get anything else out of that? I'm going to move over to others. No, not really. Okay. Uh, so, found, uh, Aaron, incidentally, you are at dinner. It's sort of more casual than you might expect. Uh, there's just food down one table, and there's lots of smaller tables in the room. It's not like the main banquet hall. Uh, company is the same as earlier in the day, with the notable addition that Moira is here now. Um, Fallon, were you looking to seek anyone in particular out? I guess my uncle's there. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, he is. Um, you see him sort of talking quietly uh, with King Steel Tree. Uh, I guess I'll go talk to my uncle. Okay, I mean, you, you could try to flag him down independently if you wanted to talk to him and not the king. I don't mind. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so you walk up to the two of them. They sort of wrap up some sort of quiet conversation as you approach. And, uh, and Arden looks over at you and says, Fallon, to be honest, I didn't expect to see you here, too. Um, <laughs> nice to see you, though. Uh, I, I, I say, Uncle... <laughs> um, he looks over at okay. the king and says, Oh, right. Um, I wanted to say, and strange man, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's just in my head. And he says, uh, Shalak, as it turns out, this one is a nephew of mine. And the king says, Really? And he says, Yeah, he uh, presented quite convincing evidence. And uh, King Steel Tree sort of looks back and forth at the two of you and says, I can see the resemblance. Um, uh, <laughs> Fallon says, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little more handsome, of course, but, you know, <laughs> he does look like me. Uh, Diplomacy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Ar Ar Arden sort of grimaces. Uh, King Steel Tree looks back and forth between the two of you, sort of narrowing his eyes. And then he sort of stage whispers over to Arden, I think your nephew's right. <laughs> Arden just shakes his head. 
Uh, uh, hail to the king. Hail me. <laughs> and uh, I guess then I, I, I can me and Uncle Arden turn away, I guess. I assume that conversation's done. Uh, yeah, sure. So you sort of make light conversation for a moment and finally, like, subtly indicate that you want to talk to your uncle. Um, and uh, the king sort of excuses himself, uh, supposedly, to uh, go talk to his advisor about something. Um, cool. Um, so we're going to go on a mission to kill some people, right? I can't remember. Have we gotten all the details on yeah, that? Yeah, basically, um, the mission is kill this hobgoblin who's in command of this demon army who, for some reason, stayed behind in Westeros. Um, her name's Rietta. Okay, cool. Um, cool. And also secure the, 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 the ruby and get rid of that. Gotcha. Oh, incidentally, this is a good point to do this. Um, before the king leaves, he tells you, he mentions to you, um, basically, of course, we'll need to know uh, when the ruby uh, is dealt with. Um, and he gives you a, uh, a message stone to that end. Okay. Does it go back to him, I guess? Uh, and Arden holds up the other one. Oh, cool. Uh, um, so I just say, looks like we got to go kill a hobgoblin. Are you going to be able to handle it here? He says, I think so, but... And he shrugs a bit. I don't quite know what shape the city will be in if we manage it. And he sort of um, gets a bit of a distant look, and then finally, go ahead. Oh, uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. He gets a bit of a distant look for a moment, and, he snap, and then he finally comes back to you. Uh, it's going to get dicey here. Did you um, manage to find Muriel? Or Mom? <laughs> Gram Graham, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice lady. She, he thinks for a moment. Did you take your lady friend there too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we met. Uh, she she accompanied accompanied me. Okay, mm, I can imagine how that went then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I bet you can. <laughs> um, I we can't really like do anything to help them, right? Uh. I mean, if you have any ideas, feel free, but, I mean, what you're doing is helping. I was just trying to think, we don't have, like, any allies, there's no, like, special horn to blow. Not, I mean, not that I'm immediately thinking of. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just we can't think. call Rohan for aid. <laughs> Light the fires! Right. Condor calls for aid. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, he see uh, Arden sees you kind of thinking. He says, "Don't worry about it, Fallon. What happens here will happen. Frankly, what you're doing is as much of a help as anything. If you do indeed succeed in decapitating their commander, he says, uh, to be honest, if I were guessing." It might even break the invasion here. Demons are not the easiest things in the world to control. Um, and the command structure can often break with a single link. So Fallon says, all right, then. <laughs> it's, it's done. One clean swipe. Good man. You should have seen what I did to uh, uh, Mother. Uh <laughs> he grimaces. Yes, I... I mean, we had no relationship to speak of. So I've heard. I... I never liked her. <laughs> well, she she got worse. <laughs> and snaky. He says, by the sound of it, good. Well, it, for what it's worth, I'm glad it led you here. Um, 
I said, well, I, I guess we'll take care of uh, some demon business then, and I'll uh, uh, hit you up on the Rocky Talkie and let you know when it's done. Perfect. Rocky Talkie. <laughs> really? Hopefully we have a chance to spend a more pleasant evening later. You don't like Rocky Talkie? Rocky Talkie. <laughs> All right. That uh, is awfully die joke. Uh, I have four children. Dude, Aaron, it's really yeah, it's I quite like clear. It Aaron, and are you We're... searching out anyone in particular over dinner? Um, Let's he's see. gonna get his balls chopped off. Uh, maybe. You don't is have anybody to. Near you can see right who comes to you. you that is absolutely an option. I may I or want may a not in the party. I I'm going to meander in the general direction of Blyra. Okay. I want a eunuch in the party. Please proceed. All right. Um, <laughs> so you start meandering that direction. Um, you notice that her older brother Brennan is standing talking with her, um, not giving you the stink eye or anything, but definitely sort of um, having some kind of conversation. Um, you do notice uh, to the <clears throat> side closer to where you're standing, the younger brother, Tad, is just uh, eating by himself and sort of staring at the wall with a bemused smile on his face. Okay, I'm going to go see what's up with him. With him? Okay. Sure, why not? All right. Uh, so you, uh, you know, you take your food, you wander over to him. Um, as you come close, he looks up at you and says, "Hi, Ernan." Um, yeah. What's up, dude? He says, "Oh, nothing much. It's been interesting since you came, though." He sort of gives you a mischievous grin and says, "My uh, sister tells me that you and your group are into some messed up shit." <laughs> Yeah, every now and then, yeah. Yeah, she's a bit rattled, to be honest. I can tell she enjoyed herself, though. Should be fine if you keep your head down for a bit. I can, I can do that. He nods. Good man. And then he takes a bite of a chicken leg. Okay. Uh, I will continue kind of wandering around the room to kind of... Seeing who I see. Um, actually, as you start to move away, he gulps down his chicken and says, Hey, Ernan, I have a question for you. If you don't mind. Okay. So, as, uh, as a cleric of Miros, if you will, um, we got a bunch of soldiers in the city. A lot of them are likely right. to be dead within a few days. A lot All of them right. would leave town if they felt like they could get away with it. You think we should let them? Let him bail? Yeah. You're all about seems freedom like stuff, right? It seems like a bad idea. Right, right, right. Just curious for your perspective. Thought it was an interesting question for someone in your position. The thing is, it's freedom for them temporarily. Until we all get enslaved by demons and die horribly dead. So, you know. Long game. Got a little it. bit of little bit of suckiness right now. Party for the future. The demons win, we don't get the party, and that just blows. Okay. Interesting. Uh, one last word of advice, and then he uh, smiles a bit and says, "You can wander the hall." Um, he gestures over towards Corin, the uh, the gnome that it seemed like a few of your other party members uh, already knew. Um, he says, didn't seem like you recognized that one. Some of your friends did, though. Some sort of wizard, I guess? Hmm. Okay. Well, anyways, I never met him before four days ago. Now it feels like he belongs here. I imagine Father made some sort of pact with him, though for the life of me, I don't know what a wizard from Tindos has to do with us. Just my idle thoughts, though. I'd like to insight check that. Yeah, sure. Give me insight. Uh, that's a... 25. 25. I'm right. good at insight. On that, 
here. Is he like enthralled or something? That sounded suspiciously enthrallish. Here are the exact words that he gave you. He's clearly a bit eccentric. Um, like the wizard dude, or no, the kid you're talking to. Okay. Okay. I mean, he's like a 18, 19 year old kid, something like that. Um, right. He sort of seems like he's treating everything as if it's some kind of game. Oh, you know that is. Goody. You. This is good to go well for me. Get the sense that he's trying to tell you something without actually telling you. Define trying to tell me something. Trying to tell me something as in it's something I probably need to know, or trying to tell me something so that he can get me screwed over or worse. Um, on a 25, his body language suggests that, and like his tone and all those things, suggests that he actually likes you. Okay. Um, so that being said, you think that there might be uh, a message within the message. Okay. But he's purposefully speaking very indirectly. Uh, okay, then. That's a thing. All right. Uh, do you continue wandering away then? Um, sorry, just a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just checking to see if I have like cone of silence or something weird like that as an option. All right. Actually, I'm pretty sure I don't. Uh, no. Okay. Um. Okay then. Sure. Right. I guess I'm going to head in the direction of this wizard person that apparently I need to be mildly suspicious of or something. Okay, Corin. Yeah, him. Yeah, sure. Um, so you walk over, and he gives you sort of a cheery smile and waves and says, Oh, hello. Uh, Aaron in it, right? Yeah. What's up? He says, I uh, haven't really had a chance to talk to you. Corin Melnor, pleasure to meet you. And he holds his hand, like, up rather far to... <laughs> I shake his hand. All right. Um, How firm is his grip? Um, I mean, about as much as you'd expect from a gnome. On a scale of one to twenty, how strong is he? Uh, let me see. I actually have a. There we go. So he is of thoroughly average strength. So like ten. But okay. he handles himself well for that. Okay. I shake his hand. All right, cool. And he says, so looks like I'll be headed with you all if that's agreeable to everyone present. Uh, looking forward to working with your group again, actually. Uh, how'd you Where get Where are we going again? Uh, over to Westeros, right? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's the sort of largish town to the west that oh. got overrun. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, sure. Should be a fun time. Right. Um, how'd you get mixed up with this group? Uh, you know, kind of was called to go help a thing, and then it just kind of went from there. Hmm. Right. Stuff with these weirdos. Have they told you about the uh, journey underground at all? <laughs> Not really. Oh. There's been there's been hints and murmurs and apparently a fear of tentacles. <laughs> what do I know? Yeah, there was some weird shit down there. Um, apparently they had a close encounter of the thirteenth kind or something like that. Um, <laughs> But uh, now I was with a different group that also wound up exploring the Underdark that we didn't know, know existed. And uh, we were actually the ones who originally found this whole demon army. They were underground for a while before they broke the surface, and that's apparently where they found all the goblins. Oh. Um, he shrugs. Anyways... Uh, well, I'm 
sure we'll see how things go tomorrow. Is there anything I can help you with for now? Mm, not really, no. Just thought I'd come say hi. Oh, okay. Well, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you as well. He, uh, what? He thoughtfully pops a grape into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what foods do, are there around? Uh, there's some like, um, there's chicken, there's, uh, corn, there's like, uh, fruit, there's wine. Not a whole lot of it. Um, I'm going some... to grab some fruit and some wine. Okay. And then anything else? Um, I'm going to wander in Mara's direction, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, you wander over there. Um, as you do, give me insight. Uh, 26. Mm. Apparently, I picked the right die to roll today. All right. Uh, so you see Moira sort of take notice. Uh, she sort of like her eyes glance over towards you, but her body doesn't move. She remains sort of talking to her brother. Uh, Brennan obviously is trying not to react, but he obviously stiffens a bit as you approach. Um, and then once you get very close, um, let me think. Actually, uh, Moira says, oh, hi, Ernan. And uh, Brennan nods and sort of turns around to like let you into the little circle. I kind of half wave and it's like, hey, how's it going? Oh, all right. Um, just uh, getting back to life around here. Uh, although she shrugs, although it's not likely to stay normal very long. Mm, yeah. Awkward silence falls. Uh, okay. Well, then I'd come say hi since apparently we're off to, uh, what's the place again? Oh. Uh, actually, uh, Brennan says Westress. Yeah, that one. I'm bad names. <laughs> yeah, we're heading off to there soon, so. Yeah. Um, Probably come. Yeah. Bye. Whatever. Bre Brennan sighs a bit and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You. How relieved does he look? But I'm leaving. Um, let me think. You've got a pretty good read on him. Actually, like, he's got generally a bit of an antipathy towards you, but, like, um, you don't get the, like, I want you to die sense off of him, or, like, um, or how should I put it? He's comfortable with the way things are at the moment. I'm basically more asking, is he happy that I'm finally leaving? Oh. I mean, maybe a little. <laughs> uh, but he sighs and says, I'm making this awkward. I'm sorry. I'll go. I would like to play with Moira's hair a little bit just to make him more awkward. <laughs> uh, as he's about to say, talk to Tad for a moment, uh, he sees you do that and he sort of stops. Moira doesn't like uh, bat your hand away or anything, but she turns and sort of rolls her eyes at you. I grinned like an idiot. I better see what he's doing, and Brennan continues walking away. <laughs> Moira <laughs> sort of looks over at you uh, askance and says, really? What? She sighs and says, you got it's... a problem tormenting your brothers? I'm sure they deserve it. Honestly, the fact that you do stuff like that is part of why we get along so well, but that one is awfully straight-laced. Really, I hadn't noticed. Really? You're such a poor judge of character. I am being incredibly sarcastic. Oh, so is she. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, well, you know, we all have our problems. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, she says, frankly, I've had a few since I got back, but all told, not as bad as it could have been. 
Yeah. Looks like it's interesting days ahead. Yeah. Uh, hopefully these next few days work out okay. Otherwise, I'm about to be a refugee too. Mm -hmm. And there are increasingly few places to be a refugee too. Although, sounds like the elves are holding out. That's good, at least. It's something. Makes Tindas possible. Some of the gnome cities as well. Anyways, uh, she looks up and says, I do hope your little errand works out. I haven't actually heard very much, but I understand you're going into the frying pan. Oh, apparently. It's kind of what we're doing these days, so. Yay, lucky me. Are you getting what you need to do it? There's only so much I can do to help, but... I think, I think we're okay. He says, good. Well, make sure you come back safe, right? I keep on. I mean, you know, maybe I'll get like a really badass car or something, though. That'd be cool. Ooh, now that might be good. Now, what are you thinking? Like, down the cheek, across the back, across your chest? I haven't really decided yet. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, yeah, and she frowns for a moment and says, Why am I getting so excited about grievous bodily harm? <laughs> uh, because you're a dirty, dirty girl? <laughs> she gives you a coy smile. Um, were you looking to get anything else in particular out of this? Not really. Okay. I wasn't just feeling time. You you flirt back and forth for a while longer. Um, eventually, the uh, evening sort of wraps up. Um, you uh, make your way back to your rooms and just sort of get ready for the next morning. Any particular prep that anyone wants to do? Um, if not, go ahead and do all your long resty stuff at this point. Um, we're, we're, this is going to be like a big fight thing coming up, right? Uh, you have every reason to Probably. expect that. So suggest. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm basically like just looking at my spell list, and be like, okay, mm -hmm. I want fighty things. I'm gonna do the probably. Right. Ooh. I'm definitely doing that. I, I actually, I actually made a note to prompt you for that if you didn't, because I think it's been a few days. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and hop over to that right now. Uh, so Fallon, are you hitting up in your room, out in the garden? Um, out in the garden the would be great. All right, cool. You uh, you wander out to the garden. You find um, you find a little space sort of tucked away to the side. Um, there's a, a, a bench sort of a, a little bit out of view, but you still sort of have the view of a fountain that's in the... Um, center of the garden. Um, yeah, yeah, Kane. I, I may or may not have been thinking, oh, we've never assassinated anyone. Let's assassinate someone. <laughs> I decided that, and then he told me to go to Korea. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> all right, so yeah. Good so luck, guys. You find yourself a little spot, and uh, go ahead and roll that d20. All right. here you um, stare out at the water of the fountain as the sort of odd mixture of anticipation and contentment um, and disorientation of the no salts settles over you the water of the fountain flares up in, in colors and forms, almost sort of like uh, some of the more, um, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, not esoteric, but some of the more impressionistic animation in like Fantasia or something like that. Um, you see 
great shadow demon erupts, and then a large tentacle uh, flies out of the water and swats through it. And at first, you think you get like blind flute flashbacks, but then you notice the suckers on the bottom of the tentacle, and you remember what Terry was that his name? Was it Terry? Oh, the octopus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see another form rise up. Or actually, a, a dozen forms, uh, goblins armed with uh, scimitars and short bows. And you watch as a great snake ensnares all of them, squeezes them all together, and then they pop one by one into sprays of color. Uh, finally, in the end, everything is just all the colors of the rainbow in no particular order uh, flaring up out of the fountain. Um, and slow, and as you come down, it slowly waves back um, into the clear water of the fountain and the sort of tan stone of the castle wall. Cool. All right. Uh, anyone else? Uh, particular preparations during the night? Um. Would they're sending us on like a freaking, a not an assassination, but like a poke beyond enemy lines? Do you can I ask somebody to see if we can get any kind of like healing or like potions and all that kind of stuff to distribute? Uh, sure. Uh, you ask around. I'll just handle this with a roll. Uh, give me persuasion. Oh fucking Christ! All right. Um. No. But. Okay. Uh, you ask around. Um, finally, you you wind like the first person you ask refers you to a different person, kind of thing, until eventually you wind up talking to uh the king's advisor, uh Lucas Swallowtail, and he says, "Oh, um." To be honest, I don't have much on hand, but uh, he thinks for a moment, actually, and he reaches into a small, like, satchel that he's carrying and says, uh, here, hopefully this should help, and he hands you a greater healing potion. Sweet. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, we will make sure to murder that one lady real good and all that. He smiles. Brilliant. That's it. All right. And incidentally, uh, just because you may not remember, I, I should mention this particular man um, is sort of singularly ugly. Like he's rather large. He has sort of a piggish face, uh, but he does have very intelligent eyes and he's very well spoken. So just to give you a sort of a mental picture. Just almost the opposite of my character. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else? Anything in particular? Uh, I deducted the level 4 spell slot and changed spells, but that's it. Okay. Uh... Does anybody need right. some, like, regular healing potions, by the way? Um... Or is a health potion different than a healing potion? I mean... Uh, I can use some potions. They're all healing I've, I've only got one greater healing potion, so it probably wouldn't be the worst idea for me. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to confiscate But I'm probably one. also okay, so. I have three potions. I will give one to Kane, Fallon, and Nairnan. Are they all greater? I was kind of kidding no, they're, there. They're, they're all oh, normal healing potions. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so you guys can I add a, a potion, normal dude. healing potion. Uh, I've been calling these 0. 0.2 pounds. Um, also, Fallon, the Sending Stone that you got. I've been calling those point one, I believe. Um, let me double check that. Because I know, yeah, point one. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and Colleen, if you want, um, we can assume that you like reassert control like immediately before your long rest, which means you'll still have all your spell slots. Yeah, I guess I could do that because we didn't do anything today with them. Right. Uh, so, so, like, you'll still have all your spell slots tomorrow. It's just, like, if you don't save a fourth or two-thirds, then you won't yeah. be able to retain control into the evening. 
or into the night. And then it'll be fine. <laughs> yup. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. Anything else? Going nah, going other than I'm good. All right. Cool. Um. Oh yeah. Uh. Maxis, I think Kane points out rightly that uh, you should maybe keep the healing potion since. Yeah, I, I put it back on. Okay. Cool. Uh. All right. Um. So you all sleep uh, a comfortable night. Your beds are extremely nice, um, and uh, you know, as much as you're used to the road, you leave them with a small amount of regret. Um, you awaken. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna make a joke, but are there any like tiny soaps or anything like that? You know, that we can do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a mint on my pillow. This is bullshit. We're just gonna hit the road. And we're just gonna meet up as a group, and just like Kane's gonna be wearing like a robe, like a bathrobe. It's like, <laughs> you, gotta... you know, Kane. Slippers. If you want to add a tiny soap, uh, weighing 0.02 pounds to your inventory, feel free, or 0.05, I guess. And also a bathrobe with Tad embroidered on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. I kind of want a bathrobe now, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know what? Uh, let me think here. Would such a thing be in the room? Probably not, but you could swipe one. I'm willing to skip over the roleplay. If you want to try to snatch a bathrobe, I will let you make a sleight of hand check. Well, no. All I'm going to do, I'm going to put the bathrobe on, put the bathrobe on yeah. and then like put my armor over it, and then use the armor to look like I'm wearing something different. You just want to be really comfortable? Is that the idea? <laughs> well, no, that's just, how I, that's just how I steal it really easily. I use the armor's glamouring to, to hide the bathroom. Okay, you still got to snatch it from uh, the okay. the castle laundry room. Um, All right. Let's go, fam. I got this. Yeah, Hell you do. Yeah. <laughs> like if you want three of them, you can take. You can have as many bathrobes as you want. They all weigh two pounds. All right, seventeen bathrobes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so if I put one of these bathrobes on, how small is this bathrobe? <laughs> well, wait a minute, Kane. How many bathrobes are you stealing? I just took two. You just took two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, were you going for any size in particular? I mean, I presume you want one to fit you. I mean, my size is... What? Why would I get, I'm not getting someone else to look for me. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're both cane-sized maxes, so yeah, it'd be tiny on you. That'd be... Alright. Um, okay. Alright, you have two bathrooms. How much do they weigh? Two pounds each. Two pounds? Yeah. It's a heavy-ass heavy fleece bathrobe. Yeah. <laughs> be, how quality is it, KC? Is it like... I'm encumbered, dang it. <laughs> You're shitting me. No. I was just about to check that. <laughs> wait, so wait. Oh wait, no. I take all the robes, the and then the first sign of like a fight, we're just gonna have your character throw the robes at the enemies until you're unencumbered. Put them in the bag. No, I, I wait. I what did have you? My dragon oh, oh, you never removed the dragon scales. Okay. Yeah. All right. That took up a lot of weight. It was like two pounds, but. That's yeah. funny. Alright, uh, Cool. This clear stone is still here, so keep forgetting about it. <laughs> he doesn't know. Alright, so, so uh, bathrobes are stolen, healing potions are acquired, and you all awaken early the next morning and gather, one of you feeling very comfortable, um, <laughs> along with Corrin, um, <laughs> at the appointed location in the castle courtyard. Um, Arden Fenris awaits you there. Um, along with a young woman uh, with shocking white hair, actually, uh, dressed um, in, a, in a blue robe. Or actually, uh, yeah, dressed in a midnight blue robe. Um, and as you all gather, um, Arden starts sort of informing you on what to expect when you arrive. Um, as it turns out, the resistance in Westeros was able to secure the facility with the city's teleportation or 
or actually, um, excuse me, I spoke incorrectly. Uh, we're able to secure the city's teleportation circle before the invasion. I believe they moved it and camouflaged it somehow. Um, in any case, we'll be sending you in that way. The leader there is a man by the name of Reuben Glasswater. Uh, recognizing him should be easy enough. He's almost as short as Maxis is tall. Uh, short blonde hair, overly serious. Anyways, he'll tell you all what you need to know when you arrive. Um, any questions before you go? Yeah, we're going like right, right now. Where's, where's, where's the? Yeah, this is the fun part. Walk? Let's go. Oh, see, okay. Are we, is are, is are you coming with us to this teleportation circle? Um, I say to the... He says, I'm going to stay to defend the city. Uh, Marta here will assist with transport. Can I, can I get a moment with my party? You know, she's she got to discuss. Take oh, so Casey, what city was it I had to go to again? Um... Okay, so I, I, in case you don't remember this, the fellow who you talked to last night um, indicated that they needed to, quote, sell everyone on the notion that you went to Westeros. Um, so... Oh, never mind. Never mind. We're good. Never mind. Okay. Ignore me, guys. I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, I, I hit my head. <laughs> he do that often. Oh, that's Arden. Anyway, so um, hey, uh, hey now. it would appear so. Only the bald ones can be fun of me. <laughs> he nods. When right. I get Fallon in next. Um anyways, uh Marta is circle ready and she says, Yes, sir. Um she turns towards you all and says, Right this way then. Um and she sort of gestures for you to step into this uh 10 foot diameter circle that she's engraved in the floor. Incidentally, all of Colleen's friends are along for the ride as well. Yay. Wait, all of Colleen's friends? Oh, her dead never mind. Yeah. Um <laughs> these, these small village of zombies. <laughs> so assuming you all sort of step forward and gather in the circle, it's a little tight with the number of bodies that are there, but you know, uh everyone fits. Um and at this point, Marta... Uh, actually, what's the casting time on Teleportation Circle? I think it's just an action. That we, or no, is it a minute? Does that include making the circle? Oh, that's as you cast a spell. Okay. Um, so uh, Marta starts sort of walking around the circle. Um, she's got uh, various colored um, chalks, actually. Like, like just... Uh, sort of a dust that she throws up into the air as she says the final words of the spell. Um, and at that point, uh, the world around you sort of warps a bit, almost seems like it twists. Um, and then when everything sort of twists back into focus, um, you're standing in a small wooden room. Uh, the floor beneath you is a pedestal of polished stone on which the teleportation circle is set. Uh, the room is small, about 25 feet by 10 feet, um, and a wooden door stands across from you. And with this, I am going to change my soundtrack. Uh, beyond that door is the sound of absolute bedlam. Something emits a warbling roar, almost a shriek. Uh, a man lets out a muffled cry of pain, and you hear a door slam open. Uh, not the one that you're looking at, though. Um, with that, I need everybody to roll initiative. Oh my. Hell yeah. Even me? Even oh, you. that hurts. Oh. Shit. Oh, I wait, know. we're in Rishra's now, though, right? Oh, wait. Oh, we have no control over a token. I don't oh, have one. I'm sorry. I forgot to set this up. Frick. Um, all right. I will get you all control shortly, but unfortunately, everybody get comfortable. I forgot to set up this part of the map. Dang it. Um, 
Everyone, quick, ask him complicated questions while he does this. Yeah, there you go. Alright, All right, I got a 22. Going first. <laughs> Seven. Right. So I'm a rogue. Should have yeah. control now. Yes. God, gotta love the advantage. Why would the rogue want to go early? Nah, fam. Thought about the. Oh, the two finishes. Working my hey, way through be, all like, of clean zombies, as well as ahead of someone. Myself. Working your way downtown. Walking fast. I, mean, I guess as long as I'm ahead of like, uh, what do you call them? Some of the enemies, but like, I get free sneak attack on anyone I go before them. Oh, I rolled a twenty-two. Nice. You know, get out of here, you guys, with your high rolls. <laughs> We're going oh first. yeah, my, my giant roll of a one. Okay, Fallon should have control. Why can I not find the music? Maxis should have control. Casey, okay, so you broke your listening party, by the way. What? You broke your Spotify listening party. Yeah, but I reestablished yeah. it. The listening party is over. Oh. According to Discord. I think you need to relink it. There we go. Yeah. Alright, Kane should have control. And Aaron, you should be good now. All right. Um, let me see here. I need to add. All right, we've got Kamork. I need to add Maxis to the turn order. Kane, Aaron. In. Kirk yeah. and Kane. Uh, I was setting up this this map late last night, and I forgot to do a bunch of the setup that I normally do. Game, boy. So we're in Worcester's, right? Hmm? We're in Worcester's now? Yep. I'm wearing the ring? Yep. Oh, okay. Did I fuck up? <laughs> what? I guess, never mind, never mind. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Maxis, you are at 22. 22. Yeah. yeah, I think you have advantage on your initiative rolls, but when you roll a 20, it doesn't really matter. Um, I was say, I, I rolled a 6 first and then a 22. So. Oh, gotcha. Alright, Kane is at 7, Aaron's at 1. And I need to roll for him. Is that an enemy? Nope, that's Corin. Dang it. Are, are those sixes enemies? Uh, you don't know. Alright, so, I mean, that being said, okay. they're human tokens, so. Alright, I'm, I'm just making sure that I got everyone on here real quick. Okay, I think that's everyone. Um, so top of the order is Maxis. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I have to explain something to you guys. Um, so this is close quarters combat. If I make all of the tokens take up five feet like they normally do, then the map becomes completely unmanageable. So if you measure the distances on this, you will realize that I'm actually using 2.5 foot square, so it's halved as compared to the normal. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, all of the actors in this combat are either medium or large. Uh, so all the medium characters are 2.5 foot squares. Uh, the large one is 7.5 feet. Um, in terms of attacking radius, you can still attack out to 5 feet. So that's going to be either one square diagonally or two squares horizontally or vertically. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that's different uh, is that if there's another creature in between you and something and something else, you can't melee attack through somebody else. So like, 
Fowlin could not uh, make a melee attack against this zombie because Kaleen is in the way. Um, but if Fowlin was like here, uh, with nothing in between, he could still melee attack Kaleen. Um, that all makes sense? Yeah. Vaguely. All right. Um, so is all the all this stuff supposed to be dark? I would, I yes. Would never uh, so that. there is a door uh, right here. Um, it's a fairly wide door. Uh, so if you throw it open, you'll be able to look into the room beyond. Yeah, I'm, I'm going straight through this door. All right. Um, let me reveal this. All right, so beyond the door, you see a number of things. Uh, and actually, this door is open, so you'll be able to see into this room. Um, so, uh, first of all, you see several what clearly appear to be dead bodies. Um, a few of them have been accosted by these uh, smaller guys, uh, but standing in the middle of the room is a large creature uh, wielding uh, six swords and six arms um, with sort of a snake-like tail. Um, and actually a... If not for the expression on the face, which is sort of one of uh, stony death, uh, would be actually uh, a rather uh, pretty face. Um, over to the side, you see some humans who appear to be running away. Uh, this one right here seems to be covering for the others. Uh, judging by his, his height and his short blonde hair, uh, you think this might be Reuben Glasswater. Uh, through the door, you can see sort of a burly man running away. Um, and you hear footsteps uh, that are starting to land on stairs. So you imagine there might be a way to an upper room there. Uh, go ahead and make me an arcana check. Real quick. Actually, just everybody make me an Arcana check. This will be for the first time that you sort of uh, take in the scene. <laughs> Every time. Every I'm time. Back. All right. I always fail Arcana, and someone else always <laughs> <laughs> succeeds. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, good work with the Arcana check. Uh, okay. So, uh, based on this, um... Just because Fallon knows all about fucking snake people. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, Aaron and Corin are going to recognize that, uh, these are all demons, basically. Uh, Fallon, uh, you actually recognize the demons themselves from stories that, uh, that Crow told you. Uh, so the smaller ones are known as dretches. Um, they're relatively weak as demons go, but they do have the ability to sort of emit a rather disgusting uh, gas that can have sort of poisoning effects. Uh, the large one is the scary one. Um, it's a creature known as a merolith. Uh, the main danger of it... Um, is the the swords that it wields, which it is very, very adept with, although it can also use its tail to bind opponents. Uh, you would also know um, this one likely would have some sort of magic resistance as well. Um, okay, so back to you then, Maxis. Uh, you've used up, what, a little over five feet of movement. Okay. Uh, I'd like to go, you know what, no, we're not going to be fancy. I would like to rage, Yep. and I would like to come right here, okay. which puts all of these gentlemen inside my uh, radius. Okay, uh, are you using, so let me see, uh, let me actually put up an aura for your rage. Uh, rage should be blood red. And oh, and I actually need to make this visible. 
Is all right. Can you see that? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um. How many times can I use the greater storm aura thing? I guess. Is uh, that a once per is day? It just always on. Okay. All right. And you would do that now. Okay. No, I'm I'm not going to, but okay. that's in good information. All right. So I am... if you get it to a higher level, you can use it more times per day. That's the way it works. Okay. Uh and after that, I'm going to take some strikes at the big one. All right. I need to make sure that my rage is actually working. Uh We should be good. Let's hope at least. Okay. <laughs> So the first one I'm going to make without Reckless. Okay. Um, so you swing, um, and it's a powerful stroke and well-aimed. Uh, but as you do so, uh, the Merilith raises up one of the swords uh, in its bottom hand and swats aside your strike. Oh, what a bitch. Okay. And Unumas. All right. Wow, all right, that was just garbage. Yep, and your second hit, uh, you bring it back around, and it skips off an armor plate at the creature's side. All right, and then she's got to do a dex check, because I am going to hit her with the lightning. Okay. Um... I'm assuming this doesn't... Does this count as magic damage? Or is it just lightning damage, I guess? Uh, so, I, I've called this to you guys as detriment several times in the past. Now it's to your advantage. I'm calling this an ability, not a spell. Um, so, uh, or let me see. And other magical effects. This is kind of, you know what? No, I'm not going to give it. I'll just do a normal de deck saving throw. So, uh, oh, I, I'm rolling as Corin, but that's actually just for the creature. Um, okay. So, uh, 20, I believe, passes the DC. So Yeah, it's it's fine. So it only takes three damage. Uh actually <laughs> it feels like it does it feels like it does almost nothing, actually. Yep, 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 yep. That's fine. Alright. That was a productive round, boys. Alright. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> no, that'll be it. Alright. It's took a mark. Sorry, you can't hear me. Can you no, hear me I now? Can't. Yeah, I can hear you now. Is this a wall right here? I uh, know that's a door. All of this is a door. Can I basically run right here? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, you're going against this guy? Yes. Okay. Uh... So, let me see here. So, yes, that will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Um, so, when you say magical resistance earlier, were you saying that I have a magic attack to do good damage, or that they would be resistant to a magical weapon? So, this creature right here... Um, yeah. Essentially... I mean, I guess I'll just tell you because anyone who's sort of in the know about D and D mechanics would know what this means. Um, it's going to have advantage on saves against spells, basically. Okay. Um, so that being said, let me see. It's a strength save. This is okay. Yeah. Uh, so Gmork runs up, uh, bites the creature sort of around its neck, um, and it falls down. Round. So that's going to be 11 damage. And there we go. All right. Uh, anything else for Gmork? 
Um, no. All right. Uh, incidentally, all the people with X's through them, if this wasn't clear, are apparently dead bodies. Uh, Colleen, it is your turn. Um, so we can still move at our normal pace. It's just exactly. Y- yeah, I just scaled everything down, so it makes things a little bit weird and for determining threat ranges. So but... is this behind a wall? Uh, like, so so this? this is a door. And the door is open. Yes. So I know it's showing is closed, but it's open. I would like to cast slow on every enemy in this room. Is that what is it? Forty foot square. Yeah. All right. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so I'll do the dretches first. It's a wisdom save, right? I uh, believe so. Uh, let me see. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, so what's your DC? I'm pretty sure that's a fail. 17. All right, I'm just going from left to right. So slow. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a fail. All right, so all the dresses are slowed. This one is also prone. All the status conditions. None of the pictures. All right, and the Merilith has advantage on this. Yeah, succeeds. Okay, well, all my uh, zombies are going to go gangbang the big thing. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Um, <laughs> let me see here. What are movement ranges? How fast can these guys move? 30 feet? Uh, let me double check. Oh, zombies no, are zombies 20. are only 20. Okay. Well, they're going to make their way over there. <laughs> um, let me see here. I will... However, the range sum of all my failures can <laughs> move 30. <laughs> yeah, let me see here. If I, I, I will, I will be extremely generous with rounding, just because I kind of stuck you up in this corner to begin with. Um, by which I say I'll fudge it by a few feet if that'll help. But uh, at the same time, I'm not going to like completely blow it out of the water. It's like that guy could get up there, for instance. Okay. And like I'd even allow like if you wanted to bring this one in like next to him and scoot him over like all oh, that's totally fine. I'm willing to allow that. Like a- actually, that is within threat range. You just have to be oh, within yeah. five feet. But they can't attack through each other, right? Correct. So. So just like just like move them uh, how you want, and I'll tell you if it's okay, basically. All right, well, I would like for them to get into combat range, but they might not all. Okay, so probably the most effective way to do this is going to be something like... I'm going to just move these guys around a little bit. Um, Probably something like this. All my zombies are going to get wiped. (laughs) Uh, Let me see here. Oh, you know what? No, it, it can't get that far. It, that's the furthest it can get. Uh, something like this could probably work if you want to move them around a little bit. Okay, so they're all in there. range except for that one. Right. Uh, actually, oh. Right, wait a minute. Could it actually get that far? Am I being too generous if I let you do that? 11. Actually, no. If you uh, If you want this one to be down one, yeah, that would be fine. Blank everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll allow all that. Unleash the barrage. Okay. Um, here we go. Um, okay. So let me see here. Uh, zombie one. Um, These are the monk zombies. Oh, okay. So zombie one uh, comes in with a strike. Um, once again, the Marilis sort of reaches out with the hilt of its weapon and bats the strike away, uh, even though you would have thought it would hit. Uh, second one comes in, miss, miss. Hmm, okay. Rogue Zombie's turn. Miss. That will hit. Alright, sneak zombies. <laughs> All right. Um, 
again, you could have hoped for more, but uh, it got something in. Uh, let me see here. So that's going to be... All right. That was an right. unfortunate sneak attack roll. And then the uh, sum of all my failures is going to shoot at the prone <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> this is why he has a name. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, that does miss. <laughs> okay, that's the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. That will bring us to the Merolith. Uh, which is going to start with a long sword attack against the monk zombie immediately in front of it. Uh... Yeah, I think so. All right, uh, so that's attack one. Um, it's going to be this much damage, uh, 11 slashing damage. I think that okay. one's gonna still be up, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember how much they HP have. They have thirty-one. Okay, so second attack comes in. Does I think does twelve hit? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, then fourteen damage. Okay. Okay. Third attack. Yep. Nine damage. Damage. Let's see. It must make a constitution save, DC 5 plus damage taken, which would be... 9, so it'd be 14, DC 14. But is it 9 or whatever past what it's reduced to, uh, or uh, total let me, damage? Let me, I have the stat block here, just a sec. Or at least I have this ability. Because either a DC I'm 8... I'm going to move it a while, guys. If your sliver controls came, I'm not here. Just go to the over. I'm not, I'm not back in time. It doesn't matter either way, it looks like. He is still alive with one. Yeah, it is 5 plus the damage taken. Uh, so that would be 14, but you pass. Alright, so he survived 3 hits. Here comes the next one. 13. That will still hit. Okay, so it deals 10 damage. So you have a DC 15 constitution save. Oh, goodbye, monk. Goodbye, goodbye Phil. <laughs> Goodbye, we hardly knew thee. Alright. Good job, Phil. He's taken he four took hits. Four for the hits. Team. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. The Merilith will step oh. forward to get everyone into threat range. Um now we have two more. Let me see here. Uh, hmm. We'll go against Gamork. Nineteen. Uh, misses. Nineteen misses. His armor class is AC is twenty. Holy shit. All right. Uh, one Battle more. Pucker. 16. All right, that misses as well. Uh, with its tail, uh, we'll go after Maxis. How's a 19? Maxis is a 19 hit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that hits. All right. Um, so you're going to take... Uh, 12 bludgeoning damage, so that will be halved. Uh, that being said, you are now grappled. Um, so if you want to... Oh, and also restrained. Uh, so there's my net. Um, so you are ensnared by the creature's tail, uh, so subject to restrained condition. Um, if you want to try to escape on your turn, um, it's going to be a, a strength save. Um, all right, and you very much uh, get the sense that you're in quite a vulnerable position with respect to it being able to attack you at this point. Does the restrained 
does it inhibit my ability to attack? Yes, it is disadvantage on all of your attacks and advantage on all attacks against you. Okay. Um, and I believe that is its turn. Um, so it is now Fallon. Um, can I assume I, if I move here, I get a clear shot at the big multi arm snake lady? Uh, like this. I mean, can um, I already shoot her? Or... Right, I'm trying to gauge this. I'm going to say you need to step one more to the right in order to get a clear shot. I was thinking about getting in the room. I was wondering if I can get down here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You have plenty of movement to do that. So it's like another 10 feet to there, and then you should still have like 15, 20 feet of movement left if you get all the way like over here if you want it. I do. I'll go right here for now. Okay. Yeah, she's pretty big, so you have a clear shot. Twenty, huh? Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Go and roll damage. Okay. Um, and those are plus ones. So, yep. Uh, yeah, your uh, arrow sinks in uh, to the creature's abdomen. Um, and for the first time, she seems genuinely displeased. Um, Doing a reaction attack for Gmork? Yes, but I can I all, yeah I'll do that real quick first. Okay, who are you uh, attacking? The same. It's, well, I guess he can attack the the big lady too. Okay. Um. Okay, um, that will miss. Okay. By the way, um, though, I, I just decided this right now. Um, for all of these creatures that have, like, poison immunity, I've decided this is a fucking magic amulet. So they'll be <laughs> immune to the poison condition, but they'll still take half the poison damage, is what I decided. Just to like make that. it actually do something. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it has some function. Um, so Fallon, though, um, I, I have a bonus action left, right? Yes. I'm going to, I guess, ready lightning arrow? Or... Uh, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, Boom. So you're now concentrating on that. Come on, spell card. There we okay, go. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Good to go. All right, cool. And that it for you then? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, that will bring us to Dretch number one, which is this guy who is slowed. Um, let me remind myself of all the various things that slow does. It's like half movement, right? Yeah, speed is halved. Why are these guys speed in the first place? Okay, that's interesting. Um, so I guess, yeah, this one is going to run up here and attack this dude through the doorway. Nine, I think, misses. Yep. And second attack also misses. It All can't right. second attack because it's slow. Oh, yeah, you're right. Whatever. Uh, it didn't happen. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, <laughs> okay. This one is prone. So it will use half of its movement to stand up. Um, oops, not remove that. And then it will attack Gmork a single time. Or actually, you know what? No. Let me 
is going to do something different. Actually, this is perfect. All right. Uh, so it is going to stand up and fart, uh, by which I mean a cloud of disgusting green gas uh, sort of emanates from it. And I need everyone in the green circle, except I think not the zombies, because they're immune to poison, if I remember correctly. Yes, they are. All right. Uh, so that's going to be Maxis, Gamork, and a couple NPCs are going to make constitution saving throws. So I will do this for said NPCs. So here is that dude. Yeah, Maxis, you pass. And Gamork passes. That dude is good. And um, what about this guy? Wow! All right, everybody succeeds on that. Um, that being said, uh, this cloud does linger, so you imagine that there is some amount of peril in staying in that area. All right. And it's this guy's turn. Um, he is going to attack the creature next to him. Right, um, and he will actually down it. And then he will move into the doorway to try, or actually, he's gonna step through to here and try to like cover this group's escape. And that will bring us to these guys. Let me see, 10 feet, huh? Oh, yeah. What do you know? Yeah. And... Yeah. All right, uh, first one is going to make an attack against Fallon. That'll be a crit. Uh, so it will be going after you with its claws for eight slashing damage. Uh -huh. And the other one is going to go after a rogue zombie. Uh, 17. I that will hit. And that is going to be five slashing damage. On which rogue zombie? Uh, this one right here. Okay. All right, um, and I'm realizing I forgot wisdom saves for all of these, so I'll do the one that emitted a cloud. That, I believe, is a fail. And then I'll do the two on the left, top and bottom. Success, fail. Uh, so this one is no longer slowed. All right, and that will bring us to Kane. Uh, okay. <clears throat> what? You know what? I'm just... Kane? Yeah, he's going... I can't control him. I, I oh, can. he left. So I guess he... I didn't realize he... I didn't realize he left. Yeah. Oh. I used to be able to control him, but I cannot. Oh, I can. That's all right. Ah, oh, I wish that I'd, like, actually caught that he was leaving. Um, well, I have his character He said he's going he he to be back because he was... I can't do like something. He wasn't sure back in time or not for his turn. Okay, I forget who's supposed to control him, but I just went ahead and made both of you able to move it. <laughs> you got it, Fallon. Yeah, you know what he can do better than I do. Okay. Um, 
So who can he attack from where he is? Can he shoot? Well, there's a wall there. Oh, okay. The door is uh, here. So if he moves to here. Uh-huh. Could he, could he shoot her with his short bow? Yeah, absolutely. Seems like a total cane move. What's this one? With special arrow. What's the special arrow? Did I don't I know. Him, did I give him plus one arrows? I did. I couldn't read all of what it is. That must be a plus one arrow, but I'm just checking. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's reasonable that you would burn a magical arrow on this. I went ahead and just deducted. Or wait, no, actually, I think it might do that automatically. So let me go ahead and add that back. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, steps to the side, fires, that will hit. So, uh, roll all damages. Why does my music keep going off? Why is it super loud? Dear God, I hate you, Spotify. I think you just need to get good, son. Need to get what? Oh, get good. <laughs> Getting uh, good because apparently you forgot to hit the button that says "repeat my playlist" when it ends. All right, can he hide? It's a super long playlist. That's not the problem. Um, well, uh, hold on a sec. You have to roll a sneak attack. Okay, I didn't realize. Yeah. Is that correct? He has a button labeled "sneak yeah. attack." Uh, so, so okay. twenty-seven damage. I believe it doesn't have a way to negate that. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so he steps back and lets loose an arrow that goes through the creature's neck and you hear it howl in pain. And can he hide? Yeah, sure. Give me a, a dexterity or give me a stealth check. Are you hiding like behind a barrel or something behind the wall over here? Sure. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, he'll duck over here and hide. Um, let me uh, let me see here. Okay, yeah. So he ducks behind a barrel. Uh, that will be Kane's turn. Uh, these people are going to uh, run away upstairs, actually. <laughs> so. Alright, so that will bring us to Corin. Alright, I gotta remind myself real quick what you can do. Uh, so Corin will rush over to here, uh, to where you can see the creature, and he is going to use this at fifth level. Oh, whatever. He's going to cast Blight. 
Um, so you see uh, dark, withering energy uh, rush out from him towards the Merilith, um, which has to make a constitution saving throw. 19 will beat his DC, so it's going to be half damage. So base damage was 40, so it'll take 20. All right, cool. And I think that's it for him. Uh-huh. All right. Um, so that is going to take us to Aaron. Okay. How are the... How's the general group of things looking in terms of health-wise? Anybody look like they're particularly bad or remarkably in good shape? I mean... Like, enemy lost. I can, I can give you a recap if you make me a medicine check. That's a nat one. Never mind. I know nothing. All right. Um, I'm just going to assume the big dude probably needs more wailing upon, so... Uh... I'm just gonna like no, run there's over. There's a wall here, so you're gonna have to move yeah. over towards the door. I just eyeballing it. It's, it's only like twenty. Oh, you don't want to. I just so I, should realized, be able to... I, I foolishly, you know what? Just to make my life easier, I'm gonna move corn to here. Uh, I'm going to here. run over here, and I'm going to smash him with my hammer. All right, wait. Let me see here. So you went like eleven. Okay, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, no, I, I was like 20 feet on the angle, it would just been like a foot or two off, so whatever. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm going to smash two handed. Alright. That, uh, 26 to hit. Uh, yeah, you smash it. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, it tries to raise one of its swords to block, but you get in over it and wail away at its torso. I'm also going to use my Divine Strike, because hashtag lightning. Alright. So that's, um, eight bludgeoning, and Is it a magic six hammer, by the way? Thunder. Uh, it's a plus one. Okay, so eight bludgeoning, and... Eight bludgeoning, six thunder. Six thunder, got it. Okay. Uh... Yeah, basically that's I'm going to smash and um he hit who was it hit was it clean uh or, so it currently has so, it hit Maxis once Maxis so hey, didn't somebody get smashed in the face semi hard I mean I'm not I'm but, restrained yeah. Maxis is the one who damaged. got hit. Right. yeah you're fine you don't need healing then um. Yeah, that's about all I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, that will bring us to Maxis, then. Okay. Um, so it's my entire action to uh, get out of a restraint? Uh, yeah. Mm, that's upsetting. Um... Okay, I will... Uh, tell this gigantic snake lady, just look, lady, I am not into bondage games. Get the fuck off. And I will try to break that. Okay. Your loss. It's gonna be a strength save. Okay. A uh, saving throw? Yep. Yes, you succeed. Uh, and then I'm gonna flip it off and shock it, because that's a free action, right? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, it is. Alright, so... Uh, so it's a dex save. And going to do literally no damage still, but... You did a damage. <laughs> I did a damage, guys. Well, because it got halved because it saved on the throw, and then it got halved because of lightning resistance. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Anything else? No, that's that's pretty much all I got. You mad, bro? <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, why? Why do I get fucked in all these fights, Casey? What's the deal? <laughs> it's Gamork. Oh, and Gamork is starting. Oh wait a minute, actually, no, he already made a save against that. Is that? He did. Oh wait a minute. I, I realize I made everybody make that save right away, but it should have been at the beginning of your next turn, so no need to repeat the save. So go ahead. Um, he is going to poison swipe the big lady. Okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Awkward. He gets advantage, but it's well, does he? Yeah, he does, but it's pointless. So he swipes, he misses. Can he move here? Interesting question. Um, huh, can you? I... I'm gonna say that, over that dead there's, body. there's too much... Oh, wait a minute, let me see here. So you could technically do this without leaving its threat range. It's a little bit video game mechanics-y, but I'll allow it. Awesome. Well, that's what he do. All right. All right. Uh, anything else, then? That'll do it. All right. Clean. All right. I'm going to lead with the zombies. Okay. So I'll start with Rogue Zombie. Okay. Uh, misses? Bitch. Uh, monk zombie. Misses. Killing me. Um, they have the bonus line. Oh, hello. Oh, snap. That, yeah, that will hit. <laughs> bonus slam. <laughs> okay, so... Alright, base damage is 12. Wow. Yeah, alright. Uh, gets in there, so misses the first strike, but then sort of ducks under in a surprising display of agility for a zombie and gets in a nice sucker punch. And the sum of all my failures is still failing me. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and second soul the big guy. Oh, wait, I think you have one more rogue zombie, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, go ahead and roll that real quick, then we'll handle the second soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> roll a d20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my life. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you do, in fact, second soul. And um, you, uh, yeah, so you, you flourish Lassadel, if you will, and unleash this bolt of um, crackling yellow energy uh, that hits the creature and you watch as it sort of reels in discomfort for a moment. And, uh, you, you have the odd sight of seeing a demon looking like it's about to throw up. Um, and, uh, yeah, charisma save. Fails the save. So it um, is stunned. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, um, uh, yeah. I'm calling these all different than spells, so you get the benefits of that as well. Wait, now it is. It says, wait a minute. Well, again, spells and other magical effects. Oh, whatever. I didn't count it against Max, so I won't count it as you. The only thing that I'm going to say by not giving it the advantage roll is I make no promises that I will be consistent about this in the future. That being said, yeah, 42 radiant damage. And is stunned. Nice work. Yeah. Uh, so it's just until it like loses its next turn, basically. If yeah. I right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nicely done. Uh, anything else for you? That's it. All right. Uh, that will bring us to its turn, and it will shake off the stun. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, this thing does quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, so. it does. So I'm I'm happy playing Utility Mage back here. <laughs> I mean, deal 42. Anyways, uh, Fallon, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, Lightning Arrow. I had that up. You did. Is that the Lightning Arrow attack? Yes. All right, can you the... throw the spell card up for me? On the... Yes, I will do that. I clicked it. Did it go? No. Oh. There it is. There he goes. All right. So, let me see here. So that is going to be a hit. So, first of all, you can roll damage for hitting the creature. All right. Uh, yep, it's magical. Okay. And then the target takes 4d8 lightning damage on a hit, so go ahead and roll 4d8. Okay. Um, it does have that dank resistance, but will still take some nice damage. And then each creature within 10 feet must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, so that's going to be each creature within 10 feet. Uh, now, I'd imagine that you could aim this to, like, the most advantageous part of the creature, because it's pretty large. Uh, so mm -hmm. where do you want the center? Or actually, wait a minute. Is there... Could you potentially keep anything? How big is that guy? Uh, the creature is uh, 7.5 feet square. So you can uh -huh. aim this so that it will miss some things. So, like, for instance, if you centered it on this corner, it would miss this creature. If you centered it here, it'd miss... Looks like it's only the one on the corner that you're actually going to miss. Um, well, I'll let you tell me. So, yeah, I'm trying to visualize this. If it, could I get it to where it only hits Maxis? Uh, no, because like, like, like if you put it here, for instance, it'll hit literally everything that's within 10 feet of where I'm Okay, can I get it to where it only hits Gamork then? Or like, of the party? Uh, well, so if you stuck it like here, it'll hit Gamork, it'll hit Aranen. It will hit... So if you wanted to hit both the Dretches, you have to put it here, actually. Um, in that case, it actually hits you, which is weird. Makes sense. Um... If you want to not worry about hitting the dredges and just try to minimize other casualties, then, yeah, there's no way to avoid hitting the things that are, like, really close. Um, if you put it here, then you'll miss Gamork. If you put it here, you'll miss these two zombies. Okay, I'll miss the zombies for clean sake. Okay. Apologize, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so I need a uh, clean roll for one rogue zombie. Uh, Maxis, give me a dex save. And Aranin and Gamork. Alright, um, Fallon, what's your save? On the spell? Yeah. Trying to read it. Uh, roll for this stretch. Is this a part of my character sheet? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it should be on your spell section. It should say safety save or something like that. I'm looking. I just didn't see it on the spell card. Maybe. Uh, hero. Can look it up, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, it's at the top. It's fourteen. Okay. Um, so let me see. So that means, uh, please roll two d eight for me, real quick. One second. Oh, all right. <laughs> so after all that, um. Let me see, Colleen, uh, this, uh, the rogue zombie on the right is gonna take four lightning damage. 
Uh, gotcha. Maxis, you also take four lightning damage. Um, Gamork takes two lightning damage. Aranin takes two. And the Stretch takes two. So I only take two. Because uh, I have resistance to lightning. Oh, you have resistance to lightning? I for oh, I forgot you picked up that ability. Nice. Yeah, so you only take two. Okay. Got all that handled. Uh, anything else for you, Fallon? I've done enough. I've done enough here. All right. Uh, that will bring us to this guy, who uh, I guess he'll just attack Aaronin. Aaronin, how about a nineteen? That hits. All right. So that will be three slashing damage. Oh, the tickles. And uh, it'll just stay where it is. Uh, in response. Huh? Wrath of the Storm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which I totally forgot about. I ha having that. I should have been using that more often. So, uh, bam! Seven points of lightning damage. Okay, I just want to remind myself how this works. It's hellish for me, but lightning, basically. Or thunder, so. Yeah. Um, oh, there's technically a dex save on it. But I, oh, yeah, you can dex save, I suppose. But yeah. When a creature within five feet attacks me, I can use my reaction to make you dex save, or else you take 2d8 lightning or thunder. I feel like lightning sounds more accurate for the moment, so. Yeah. Uh, like, rolls a 12, like... which I believe is a fail. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... He swings, hits my armor, and it's just like... It's like he like stuck a fork in a power outlet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, the thing that I was looking for, by the way, was like, if you can only use it a limited number of times, and so it's equal to your... Oh, uh, yeah, it's a wisdom so. Alright. Uh, that being said, you did just kill it. Yeah! Uh, so, actually, let me just represent this real quick. Uh, that being said, this cloud of gas remains. Uh, okay. Um, so, dredge down. Uh, this guy is going to... Eh, I guess he might, like, shoot a crossbow or something. Yeah. So... He'll take a shot at the Merilith. Oh shoot, he'll even hit it. Um, Alright. Oops. Okay. That will bring us to these stretches. Oh, oh yeah, it's down, so. So the slowed one will actually run up to here and is going to go after Fallon. Nine, I believe, should miss. I do. Let me try the wisdom save again. Will fail. Uh, this one will. Mm, let me see here. Yeah. It'll step in and do the same. 21. I believe 21 hits. It, it does. So yeah. it bites you for 4 damage, uh, 4 piercing. And I'll go after you with its claws. 5 will miss. Alright, and... Kane, it's you. Is he here? He said he was back. Maybe he's just muted. Yeah, he's muted. Guess who's back? <laughs> back again. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I, I had to get but he hasn't shot. Um, okay. Hmm, doing stuff. Let's see. All the human tokens are Friendlies, right? That's been established? Yeah, so the enemies are this big guy and these two that are attacking Fallon. Is that Fallon's aunt? What? 
Is that Salomon's aunt? My aunt? Yeah. No. Giant snake lady. Oh, I, I see. Mean... It's actually a demon. Oh, shit. Oh, so he's got a couple guys on him. How are you looking, Salomon? How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm fine. What you gonna do, Kane? Alright, I'm thinking. What I have what I have going for me. Let's see. Uh can I step up the wind? Wait, how far away am I? You... The distance is what saying, right? Yeah, yeah. The distances are weird. So yeah, you're plenty close. Step of the wind. Alright. Uh, where are you going into? Uh, it's next to Maxis. Okay. Yep. Next to Lady. So I gotta do a thing for that. Right. Yeah. Um, let me pull up the ability real quick. I do. Does that even hit? Uh, probably not. Uh, but let me double check here. So. I'm pretty sure that's yeah, the first part. even with the advantage, it's uh, not going to hit. For what it's worth, I'll go ahead and do the wisdom save. But I don't think it actually matters. Yeah, and 21 definitely saves. Uh, I mean, that being said, uh, Kane, you flash across the room, and you're now here. Um, and your strike has sort of glanced off of one of the plates that's on Does that the use a creature's chest. Uh, no, actually. Okay, cool. Well, I'll be like, uh, uh, th that, that was awkward. <laughs> oh, is that can... Uh, is, is that a disengage or are you just running? Disengaging, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was like, that's actually... I did that cool move and it was the knot. Okay, yeah, so you all see Kane uh, do something that he's done before. He sort of blurs across the room, uh, flourishes his rapier and a strike. Uh, but goes a little bit awry, uh, does not manage to land the hit, and then you see Kane's oh shit face as he ducks and runs away. Um, and actually, Colleen, as Kane steps back in and starts to like duck back into hiding, uh -huh. you see him vanish. We'll get back to that in a moment. <laughs> Uh, I'm just not good, guys. Everyone's still. You can't see me. We are going to head over to Corin, who will just use, I think. I mean, ironically, we probably all, like, this is just a normal fucking day, honestly. <laughs> Kane, Kane kind of just does this all the time. I mean, I don't always disappear in you guys. Sometimes. Okay, uh, Corin will hit with a ray of frost. I wonder if he's gonna trespass on somebody's property this time. <laughs> okay, that that's a way callback. <laughs> okay, wow. like today. I, <laughs> it's like it was like, just yesterday. Like, and then the day before that. Like or something, you know? Y'all just kind of like were like, yeah, he's blue, and and let me kicked out. Okay, Aaron, and it's your turn. To do things again, wow. Oh, except um, uh, you are in the poison I'm gas cloud. in the poison cloud, because I'm done. So make a constitution save. Uh, 14. Uh, that succeeds, so you're good. Yay! Um, okay, so we got the big dude and two of the smaller dudes left, right? And that, this one's a zombie, right? Uh, yeah, that's one, that of bad that's one of Colleen's. Okay, I, so that's not something I should be smashing then. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna smash with that hammer again. Okay. So that's a 18 to hit. Uh, it brings up one of its long swords and bats your hammer away as you go in for the strike. How rude. Um, 
I would like to use my bonus action to flip it off and call it new names. Okay. Uh, give me a performance. <laughs> I'll roll a wisdom save for it. I'm nat 20. That's a nat 20? Nat 20! Alright, let me see if a nat 20 is its wisdom save. Uh, 18. Uh, <laughs> what, what names do you call it? Uh... Give me at least one name. I would, I'm going to say, hmm, I didn't bump this far ahead. I'm going to call it a fracking toaster. Oh, shit, man. It seems, it, 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 spins, it spins around to look at you and it seems pissed. Uh, <laughs> Maxis, it's your turn. Okay, I'm gonna use my reckless attacks on this large thing, I think. Actually, you know, though, can I move over here without drawing an attack of opportunity? Uh, well, you seem to be behind a zombie at the moment. Wait, which zombie? This over here? Yeah, that's behind a zombie. You can't occupy the same spot. You'll have to keep moving a little bit. Um, okay. I mean, you're, like, behind a thing. I can't even see your token right now. I, I do not see a thing on my screen, so I'm confused. Oh! Wait a minute. No, that's on the token layer. Uh, he you moved see a on the other. He went over one. He slipped past it. Yeah. He's right he, here, isn't he? He yeah, went from I'm... one side of it to the other side of it. I do not see Maxis's token. It's it is now on the left side of that zombie. Oh, well, you're under this zombie then. Okay, well, that oh. one just showed up. Yeah, I had no <laughs> idea that that was there. Oh, wait, really? That's weird. Yeah, yeah. we didn't see that. Okay, at that all. was it's like there. a glitch in the Matrix then. Okay, in that case, I will not move there, and I will <laughs> just attack it from here then. Okay. Well, yeah, these are going to be reckless. So. Okay, you have to. Do we you still got a roll for the. The gas. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. No, because this is his... Isn't this his first turn? No, not No, since. it's not. Yeah, you do have to roll a con save, then. Yep. Would you quit, you nerd? Okay, yeah, Sorry. you're good. I'm, ta I'm talking to my doc. <laughs> right, you know what? Yeah, Exploiting the momentary room. distraction uh, that Aaron created, I'm going to give you a plus two on these. Yay! Sick. All right. So that's a 27. Or it's a 20. Uh, that being said... No, oh, no, a it's a 27. Reckless, you're right. So, yep, yeah. uh, go and roll damage. Uh, you get in okay. past the creature's guard. That's yeah. uh, 18 damage first one. Yeah. And for the second, that's a 20. Uh, for the second one, the creature does uh, bring up one of its swords. Uh, it sort of spins back to you after you hit it the first time, and bats uh, your axe away. Alright, and I will bolt up again, even though it does, like, zero damage. Uh, it does fail the save. So, so it takes four damage. Yeah, it does. Alright. Anything else? Uh, um, I'm gonna move... How big is this thing's range? I guess I'll move. No, I don't want to do that. I'll I'll, I'll stay here. All right, sounds good. Uh, Gamork. That. I don't know. Yeah, uh, well, pack tactics. I'm not. Well. Hmm? Uh, advantage on attack rolls against creature. Also, allies is within five feet of the creature. Okay. Yeah, that being said, um, it is going to, again, bring around another one of its swords and sort of uh, jam it towards Gamork's mouth, actually, and force him to back away. So, okay, okay. you can just it, it has a parry ability that it can use every single turn. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> well, that's nice. Can Gamork pry the sword from its hand? That's Not what I'm doing. Turn. <laughs> okay. I guess Mark waits. 
All right. Colleen. Um, I'm going to spend eight health to cast Blood Seal on Maxis. Okay. So he gets 2d6 plus 16, so 23 health, temporary health. Okay, yeah, Maxis, you have 23 temporary HP. And then the zombie slamming continues. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, so first one's a crit. Go ahead and... What, what kind... Oh, okay, so that's one of the monks. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so... All right. Uh, go get him. Gets in there. Uh, so the 20 is... Is that a... That's the, the rogue zombie. Oh, yeah, they're both rogues that are left there. Okay, so the 20 will hit. So go ahead and roll... Or actually, wait a minute. No, I apologize. 20 will not hit because it... Uh, once again, flourishes one of its swords and parries. Okay. Some of all my failures. One day. Oh. Oh, shit. It. shit. Did that it, will hit. Oh, I shit. did it, buddy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Colleen. Yeah. How do you want to do this? Oh. Oh! Bree <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, gets the kill. You can choose. He's the sum of all my failures. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think that... Uh, I, I mean, if you, if you want me to narrate it, that's fine. But I feel like the sum of all my failures just destroyed a fairly high-level demon. Go for it. Tell, tell me how my Skellyman does. <laughs> okay. Um... He's had a hard life, you know. You discovered him on a barren wasteland on Erju Glacier. Who knows how long he had lain in the grave. Uh, you awoken him, you awakened him, and although you attempted to give him purpose that he never felt in life, he always felt like he was a drag. He just sort of rattled around, never really felt like he amounted to much, in fact, you kept going to all this pain in order to even keep him in your group, and it just made him feel guilty. <laughs> but then, just a moment ago, in that spot where his heart used to be, he felt a feeling that he had never felt in all of his orcish life. He felt the stirring of love. And in that moment, he knew what he had to do. He lifted his bow, he aimed it, straight at the sweet spot, just underneath the creature's neck, let fly. The arrow streaked across the room, coruscating, spiraling, uh, pure light seeming to emanate from it. And as it struck through, and a sort of a gout of green and black ectoplasm escaped the creature, he looked over his shoulder, and you could swear you saw him smile. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and with that, I am going to allow that you all can clean up a few dretches. So, you, um... I hug my skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you have clearly interrupted something that was uh, going on in this spot. Um... But it seems like you managed to save at least a few people. Um, and with that, we are going to go somewhere else and come back to Kane for just a moment. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kane. Let's go back to the moment when you were standing in a room in Westeros and then suddenly you weren't. You feel a familiar lurching sensation and see a blur of color. You feel the ring crumble from around your finger. When the world resolves again, you're standing in a spare wooden room filled with several chests. A dark elf leans against the wall across from where you stand. 
He looks at you and says, I believe you'll find everything you need in here. Good luck. He said what? He says, I believe you'll find everything you need in here. Good luck. And without waiting for you to respond, he turns and opens the door to leave. Thanks. Okay. Do you try to stop him at all or just let him go? I just let him go. At this point, I stop asking questions when it comes to the East Coast. Okay. You find yourself in a room with uh, a few wooden chests. As you inspect them, you find a variety of useful things, actually. Um, Some clothes and makeup that'll make well for a disguise. Um, A few other interesting uh, implements, poisons, potential, uh, some very uh, sort of tough wire that could be used for any number of things, uh, basic crowbar, stuff like that. Uh, whatever one might reasonably need to uh, hunt down a perfectly honorable businessman. And Unless you have anything else, that is where we will end. What? I said, unless you have anything in particular you want to do, that is where we will end for today. Oh, I thought you, I thought you, I thought you got cut off. Um, I mean, I guess just look around for stuff that's useful, but I just want to go over that afterwards, or what I find in particular. All right, yep. Uh, yeah. You start inventorying. We can discuss. There will be a yeah, probably yeah. a side session related to this. So. What, what do okay. I do? And with that... Uh, Thank you, anyone who's made it this far. This is Casey Stranger, signing off.